Let's continue to think about these apples that are selling for a price of $3 for one apple. Now let's say that I tell you um, that you spent $24 on apples. How many apples did you buy? If they're $3 per apple and you spent $24 an apple, how many apples did you buy? Well, I hope that problem wasn't too hard for you. It should really just be common sense that you bought eight apples. Because eight times three is 24. This is the number of apples you have to buy at this price to get you up to 24. If you'd only bought one apple, it would only have cost you $3. That's not enough. If you'd only bought two apples, that would only have cost you $6. That's not enough. But if you buy eight apples, that would cost you $24. So this is how much you must actually have bought. Or let's say that you spent $15 in apples. How many apples did you buy? Well, it should be common sense that you bought five apples. If one apple costs three dollars, five apples would be fifteen dollars. I hope you can see that these problems are a little bit different from the problems I had on the board a second ago. Before, I was telling you how many apples you were buying, and you used that to figure out the total spent. Now I'm telling you the total spent, and you're using that to figure out the number of apples. Uh, but either way, it's pretty much just common sense. You, should, you can probably do this in your head without writing anything down. And our goal, in a sense, is to get to the point where we can do the same thing with other ratio units that you're not as comfortable with in physics and chemistry. Now, you probably didn't have to write anything down to solve these problems, but, but let's try to write this down a little bit more formally. How could you write out more formally how to go from $24 to the number of apples? So let's say that we didn't know yet how many apples you bought. You spent $24 in apples. How many apples is that? Well, let's work that out. You spent $24, and we know that one apple would cost $3. We know that one apple would cost $3, and you actually spent $24. Now we can cancel diagonally. Now what calculation do we have to do? Well, we can ignore the ones. They're not going to change anything. What we have left is 24 divided by 3. When something's on the bottom of the fraction, you have to divide by that. So 24 divided by 3, which is 8 apples. Well, of course, that's the answer we already figured out. So again, this is a type of unit conversion problem that you might have already seen early in your class. Uh, a very simple type of unit conversion. This problem might be a little trickier for people. Because notice that when we talk about the price of apples, we report it in d with dollars on the top and apples on the bottom. But when we did this problem, we put the dollars on the bottom and the apples on the top. Can you see how we flipped these ratios? Here the dollars were on the top, but here the dollars were on the bottom. Uh, how did we know that that was a good thing to do? Well, remember that we started with the $24, and we needed to cancel that out and get apples, because we were trying to figure out how many apples we had spent. Um, so it wouldn't have done us any good to put dollars over apples. That wouldn't cancel out these dollars over here. So this is hopefully a skill you've already picked up from unit conversion. You have to um, be strategic about what you put on the top and what you put on the bottom of your fraction. Strategically here, we want to put dollars on the bottom. That cancels out these dollars, and then we're left with apples. Let's do another example of that. Let's try to work out on paper using this type of unit analysis how many apples you could buy for $15. Try pausing the video and giving that a shot. I hope you gave that a shot so we can start with the $15. All right, and now we're going to use this ratio unit. Now, what should I put? Uh, let's write this out. So we know you're spending $15, and we know we're going to multiply that by this ratio unit, and then we know that our goal is to convert dollars into apples. So what do we need to put on the bottom of this ratio unit to cancel out these dollars? Well, we need to put the dollars on the bottom to cancel out these dollars here. And what do we need to put on the top? Well, then we have to put the apples. 
Well, that's really where we want them because we want ultimately to be left with apples as our unit. Now we have to put in the correct numbers. Um, well, we know that it's $3 for one apple. Um, so obviously, if you flip the fraction to put the dollars on the bottom, you better put the number 3 on the bottom too. Since the dollars have moved to the bottom, the number 3 has also moved to the bottom. And the number 1 has moved up with the apples to the top. So this is still one apple costs $3. We can see that was the right way to go because the dollars cancel. And now this is really 15 divided by 3. We can ignore the 1. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. If you spent $15, you bought 5 apples. Let's do a couple more examples. Um, maybe this might seem trivial or overly easy, but this is a really important skill uh, for your physics and chemistry classes. And the important thing is that when you're working with unfamiliar units, it's not nearly as trivial and easy seeming. Let's say you spent $42 on apples. How many apples did you buy? Try to pause the video and work that out using the same notation we used for the last couple of examples. Well, we start with the $42. We're going to multiply that by the unit ratio. And we hope that ultimately we're going to end up with apples. What units do I need to put down here in the ratio unit? Well, I need to put dollars down here to cancel the dollars up here. And that means I'll have to put apples on the top. Well, that's good because then our final unit will be apples. Now, where do I put the number 3? Well, the number 3 has to go with the dollars. So now the number 3 goes on the bottom and the number 1 goes on the top. The dollars cancel. And we end up with 42 times 1 divided by 3. Well, we can ignore the 1. This is really 42 divided by 3. 42 divided by 3 is 14. So if you spent $42 in apples, you must have bought 14 apples. Let's try one more example. Let's say you spent $153 on apples. Price is still $3 per apple. How many apples did you buy? Pause the video and try to work out on paper using our same notation what that would be. $153. Now we're going to put our unit ratio. And then eventually we hope to convert into apples. What do we put down here? Well, we've got to put the dollars down here. Even though in this ratio, dollars is on top, here we have to put dollars on the bottom. And that leaves apples for the top. Where do we put the number one? Well, the number one goes with the word apples. So now the number one's on top, and the number three's on the bottom. The dollars cancel. And we end up with 153 divided by 3. 51 apples. 51 apples. So now we've seen that if you have the ratio unit, um, you can go in either direction. If you're told the number of apples that are being bought, you can easily figure out how many dollars were spent. Or what we just saw is that if you're told how many dollars were spent, you can figure out how many apples were bought.
So again, notice how this ratio unit of dollars to apples allows you to go from apples to dollars or from dollars to apples. Originally, we did problems where you were told, say, that you bought two apples, and we figured out how many dollars you spent. And now we're working on problems where you're told the number of dollars that you're spending, and then you can convert that into apples. So again, we're seeing that um, even though at first a ratio unit might not seem very helpful because it only tells you what happens in a single hypothetical case where you buy one apple, it turns out that this is a hugely helpful piece of information. Because now for any number of apples, we can figure out how many dollars we would spend. And for any number of dollars spent, we can figure out how many apples were bought. Um, and for the same, for the same reason, uh, ratio units in physics and chemistry are also extremely helpful. Um, even though um, technically they only tell you directly about a single hypothetical situation.